Here, I show a one-period binomial model example. We consider a stock currently selling for $40 per share. A call option is written on this stock with an exercise price of $35. Expiration time for the option is one year. And currently, the risk-free interest rate is 8% per year. So we're going to use the one-period binomial lattice to show how the price of uh, the call option is determined using the binomial model. So the stock is currently worth $40. We assume it can either go up by 25%, that's the upside parameter, from 40 to 50 bucks, or it can go down by 20% from 40 to $32. Now, notice here, if it if the stock ends up at $50, the option will be in the money with an intrinsic value of 50 minus 35, which is 15. And so this is the profit that the call option holder would enjoy, not you. Remember, you are the hedger. Put yourself in this example in the position of a hedger who purchases a stock and is worried about the stock going down in value. And to hedge, you wrote a call. Now, if on the other hand, the stock goes down from 40 to 32, then the option is out of the money. Its intrinsic value is zero. And so as you can see here, the option payoff at the end of the one period is going to be either 15 if it is in the money or zero. The range of outcome here is 15. Now, though, more importantly, if the stock goes up to 50, and with the option being in the money, you're going to lose $15 because this $15 again is the intrinsic value of the option which the call option holder would enjoy. And so the value of your hedge portfolio would be 35 which is the value of your stock minus the value of the option. Now, if on the other hand, your portfolio goes down in, in value, uh, your stock goes, do goes down in value from 40 to 32, and the option is worthless, then your portfolio value is 32. So your hedge portfolio would, would again be equal to the value of your stock, which is 32, minus zero since the call option expired out of the money. So as you can see here, the range of outcome would be 35 minus 32, which is 3. So now, the question that we're going to ask ourselves going forward is how many shares of stock should you purchase so as to ensure that the ending portfolio payoff would be the same regardless of whether the stock goes up in value or goes down in value? To begin, in step number one, we define the possible ending stock prices, which we have done. It's either going to go up by 25% to 50 or go, uh, go down by 20% to 32. Step number two, we find the range of values at expiration. Again, the range of value would be, uh, the range of values would be 18 if the stock goes up in price to 50 or down to 32, the difference of which is 18 or 15 in terms of um, the option payoffs because if the stock goes up to 50 then the intrinsic value of the option we have shown would be 15. If the stock goes down to 32 the intrinsic value of the option would be zero. Therefore the range of option payoffs would be 15 minus zero which is 15. Now as a reminder, the value of your hedge portfolio one year from today would be the value of your stock minus your option payoff. Remember, your stock represents your asset, and the option you sold is a liability because if the holder of the option chooses to exercise, you must oblige. Now, in step number three, we buy exactly enough shares to equalize the range of payoffs
for the option for the stock and the option so again remember the range of stock price is 18 if I go back it is 50 minus 32 which is 18 while the range of option payoff is 15 if I go back it is going to be 15 if the option is in the money or 0 if it is worthless. Remember, the in the moneyness of an option is viewed from the standpoint of the option holder. So even though you wrote the option, you have to consider an, an outcome of 15 to be in the money. To construct a riskless portfolio, we need to equalize these ranges so that the profits from the stock exactly offset the losses incurred from satisfying the option holder of an exercise. And you do this by buying the range of option payoff divided by the range of stock payoff, which here is 15 divided by 18 or 0.83. So 0.83 shares of stock would be purchased for every one call option that you write. Now, if you don't feel so comfortable viewing this in fractional form, then you can um, view it in hundreds or in thousands. For example, if these were in thousands, then it means that 833 shares would go with 1,000 call, uh, calls. So, but the fraction is what defines the fact that in the end, to construct this riskless portfolio, the number of shares of stock that you purchase must be less than the number of calls that you write, except in one specific condition that you're going to learn about later when the ratio can be equal to 1. To prove that that ratio of 0.83 is correct, we present a mathematical argument here using notations, and this is quite simple to understand. Let's use S sub U to represent the notation for the stock price if the stock goes up, and SD for S down, as S U is S up, for the notation of the stock if the stock price goes down. Likewise, CU or call up is the call option payoff if the stock goes up in value, while CD for call down is the call option price if the stock goes down in price. And let N be the number of shares of stock that you're going to be purchasing. We want the value of the portfolio to be the same. Remember, we want our hedge portfolio to be the same regardless of whether the stock price goes up or goes down. Now, what would be the value of our portfolio if the stock goes up? Well, it's going to be our assets minus our liabilities. Our assets would be the stock price multiplied by the number of shares we purchase, which is the total value of our equity, of our assets position, minus the call premium. Likewise, if we have, if the stock goes down in price, then this would be the total value of our stock position, which is the number of shares times whatever the lower price of stock is, minus the call premium. So now, the question is, what would be the number of shares such that the value of our portfolio, which is this entire argument, if the stock goes up, is the same as the value of our portfolio if the stock goes down in price? So we set these two equal and solve for n. And here is the result of that algebra. So it says that the hedge ratio, which is what I'm referring to here, this is called hedge ratio, is equal to CU minus CD divided by the difference between SU and SD. And if you plug in the numbers, you find that 0.83, which we solved in an elementary fashion back over here. So now, Armed with this information, it means that if we're going to buy 0.83 shares of stock, then the current value of our portfolio would be $40, which is the current stock price multiplied by the number of shares. So that's going to be 33.33. At the end of the period, and if the stock goes up in price,
then the total value of our stock portfolio would be $50, which is the price rise multiplied by the number of shares, which is 41.67. If the stock goes down in price to 32, then the total value would be 26.67, the total value of our stock, that is. So now, in step four, we create a riskless hedged investment. And here's the proof of it. Remember, we're going to buy 0.83 shares of stock for every one call we sell. So here's the quick summary of this argument. The initial stock price was 40, which multiplied by the hedge ratio of 0.33 tells us that the total value of our stock portfolio is 33.33. If the stock goes up to 50, this would be the value of our stock portfolio. If it goes down to 32, this 26.67 would be the value of our stock portfolio. If it goes up to 50, the option payoff would be 15, which is 50 exercise price minus 35. So, for 50, which is the stock price, I beg your pardon, minus 35, the exercise price. So that's 15. And we showed earlier that the intrinsic value would be zero if the stock goes down in price to 32. So as far as the options are concerned, the range of outcome would be 15. Now though, but observe that if in fact the stock goes up to 50 such that the total value of our stock portfolio is 41.67, then what this means is that our portfolio, our hedge portfolio payoff, the value would be the stock value of 41.67 minus our liability, which is the intrinsic value of the call option 15. The difference is 26.67. Likewise, if the stock goes down in price to 32, such that the total value of our portfolio is 26.67. Then, since the option expired out of the money and is worthless, the portfolio value, if the stock goes down in price, would be the value of our stock, 26.67, minus zero, our liability, to still give us 26.67. Voila, as you can see, our portfolio value is the same, regardless of whether the stock goes up or goes down. And so we have effectively constructed a risk-free hedge portfolio. How will this help us determine the price of the option today? Well, in step number five, that's where we're going to find the value of the option price today. To do so, remember, if I go back here, the value of our portfolio is 26.67, regardless of whether the stock price goes up or down. So the question is, what's the value, what's the present value of that 26.67? In other words, I go back one more time. If we are here today, and at the end of, the, at, at the end of this lattice here, this node, the value of our portfolio would be 26.67, either here or here. Today, what's 26.67 in terms of its present value? So we're just simply going to discount it one period. Remember, in this example, one period is one year. So, okay, I've got a little, I got a little bit carried away here by using daily discounting, which is dividing 8%, the annual rate, by 365, and discounting it over 365 days. It really doesn't matter in this case if I just go 1 plus 0.08 to the power of 1 since it is one year. I would get the same thing as I would get if I did it the way I, I showed it here. I showed it here on, pur I showed it, uh, on a daily basis on purpose because a lot of times in binomial option pricing we assume days to maturity. The holding period is usually less than a year. And so to annualize, you'd have to actually um, express all your estimates in the, um, you know, using 365 days to show how much uh, the rate is per day.
in any event. The present value of $26.67 over 365 days is $24.62 using discrete discounting. In the binomial option pricing model, it's more traditional to use continuous discounting whereby present value is equal to the future value multiplied by E, which is the base of natural logarithms, to the negative RT. R is the discount rate, which in this example is 8%, and T is the expiration date of the option, expiration period of the option. So plugging and playing right here, just as I did down here, we calculate it to be 24.62. So that's the value of our hedged portfolio today. Again, remember that the value of our portfolio is equal to our assets minus our liabilities. Our asset is the stock. Liability is the option. In this case, the option payoff. Therefore, if you want to calculate option price, solve for it algebraically. So option price would be equal to the value of the stock minus the current portfolio value. Value of stock is 33.33 .33 minus the current value or the present value of the portfolio which we just solved for 24.62 and you're looking at it right here this is the theoretical price of this call option today eight dollars and seventy one cents and then this eight dollars and seventy one cents would represent the equilibrium price of the call option if the option sells for any price other than eight point six seventy one then theoretically we do have an arbitrage situation since the portfolio is a riskless portfolio returning 8% the risk-free interest rate. In the next presentation I will give a summary of this example on a spreadsheet.